Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft. So today I want to talk about lighting effects for your tabletop because you can have the most intricately carved piece of terrain that you spend hours and hours on. You'll put it in front of your players and they'll be impressed but not to the same level as if you just have something that has lights in it because for whatever reason we are all little children in our brains and we just like it when things are shiny. And my lighting effects were one of the first projects that I had kind of tackled when I was first getting into crafting. And uh, like, you know, a childlike player, I was excited to uh, put those on the table. So I wanted to get them, I just wanted to get them on there. And I didn't necessarily take my time with them. I didn't think them through. Uh, I just kind of like glued a bunch of stuff together with hot glue and I uh, didn't necessarily have all the techniques at my disposal that uh, I've learned over the years of crafting. So I want to revisit that project because I have limited space on my uh, in my apartment and on my shelving. So every once in a while I like to go back and look at a project that I maybe rushed the first time or didn't do so well or uh, just kind of threw it together. And uh, I want to revisit it and kind of make it a little more well crafted and uh, really make sure that everything on my shelf is just a piece that I can be proud of. So lighting effects, that's what I need to do today. My lighting effects are uh, weak uh, at the moment, but I think we can uh, use some techniques to elevate them to, uh, I guess, my current ability. So this isn't necessarily a new idea. There's a lot of good tutorials on this already. Uh, Black Magic Craft has a really good one in, uh, on fire markers, and I'm probably just going to copy a lot of that for, uh, for my own table. So I'll, I'll link to that in the description. Uh, he covers it in way more detail than I'm about to, but uh, I'm going to elaborate on it a little bit uh, and kind of take those techniques and, and roll them out to a couple more ideas uh, that uh, I think would be good for my table. And... Uh, DM Scotty's got a really good tutorial as well, and uh, Hanker Inferno also does uh, a tea late video on making torches that's pretty good. So I'll link to all three of those. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to make some for myself and put my own little spin on it. So hopefully there's something you can get out of this that uh, inspires you to do something like this yourself. And uh, you know, we're always growing as people, so it's never, uh, never a bad idea to go back and look at your old projects and think, hmm, how can I, and I bring this up to my new standards. So that's what I'm going to do today. Let's get down to business. So these are my old fire markers. I made them out of tea lights using various techniques. A lot of plastic or colored plastic hot glued onto the flame to make it uh, light up. A lot of hot glue, a lot of disorganization on these things. Um, not super impressive, but these were one of the first crafts I ever did, so they got the job done, but I could certainly do better now. And that's what we're going to do today. So I've got these ones here, various uh, kinds. i got some black ones from Walmart that you get around Halloween, and then i got these bigger ones. So what I'm going to want to do with those bigger ones is use a pair of pliers and just pull it off the top because I don't need all that extra plastic. I just need this light. So the problem with these, once you get the plastic off, is that there's a bit of plastic that holds the uh, switch down as you turn it on and off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some strips of MDF so it holds it down. I'm just going to use some E6000 to glue that in place. Then I'll take a slightly longer strip and glue it across the two small pieces that I already put down. I'm just going to use the flat edge of my knife to put a shit in place. Set that aside to dry. And I'm going to cut some really thin strips of this foam here, just out of my scraps that I have laying around. I'm going to want to take this and wrap it around some of my tea lights because I want to be able to texture it and make it look like stone. So the uh, strips are thin enough that I can just bend it around the edge 
And I just cut these with a knife, so they're not perfect, but they don't need to be. So I'm just going to measure it out, how long it needs to be to wrap all the way around. And I'm just going to cover a couple of those. So I'm just going to pre-bend it a little bit so it uh, goes a little easier. And then I'm going to take some super glue and use that to glue it to the plastic. Hot glue or PVA glue will not work very well here because you need it to dry pretty fast and uh, the hot glue won't stick to the plastic. So I'll just hold that for a bit, try not to get it all over my fingers. But once it holds, it'll hold forever. So I'll just do that to both, because I'm going to make two of these like this. Okay, so these are going to need a top. So I'm just going to take some more pieces of foam and trace it on and then cut it out with a sharp knife. Because these are somewhat irregular, I'm going to make sure I trace for both and not just use the same shape twice. Okay, now because the foam that I glued to these tea lights is taller than the tea lights, I'm going to cut off the excess. Make sure it's just as tall as it needs to be, and I'll do that for both. But first, actually, I'm going to take these wooden dowel things that I got at the dollar store. They're hollow on the inside, so the light will go through them. So I'm just going to trace how much space they need on my uh, circles that I've already cut, and then uh, put them through those. And because I've pulled the uh, plastic off the top of the tea lights, they'll fit right on top there. And then I'll use super glue to glue those wood dowels on there. And I'll use some Eileen's tacky glue to just glue the foam to the foam. Perfect, I'll just replicate that again. So these are going to be like brazers that I put throughout my dungeons because I feel like the tea lights on their own look more like campfires and I want these to be more up like, uh, more like torches. Okay so moving on, these are going to be more like fire markers, very very similar to what Black Magic Crafts video is that I linked earlier. So I'm just going to take some toilet paper and some uh, watered down PVA glue and a spray bottle full of water and I'm just going to use that to mold them on the shapes of these to try and hide that base. So I'm just tearing off small pieces at a time and just layering it up and layering it up and then coating it in watered down glue and putting it on a rack to dry. I don't usually like to use this method very often because it takes so so long to dry, like a full day at least, and I usually like to try and get a lot done in one sitting as possible because I have a job and I do a lot of my work on the weekends. And if I have to spend 24 hours waiting for it to dry, it doesn't usually work for me. But this method is really effective if you have the time and it, it dries rock solid. So it's hard to argue with that. So I'm gonna just splash a bunch more watered down glue on top of these and then sprinkle some rocks on them. And then I'm gonna put some full strength glue and put some sand on top of them. And that's gonna take forever and a day to dry, so I'll set that aside. So here I have a piece of packing um, stuff. I think it came with furniture. It's kind of like paper mache texture. I thought these were a really cool shape. 
and I want to put a torch in the middle of each of them and have it as kind of like a dungeon scatter pillar with a torch. And so there's a couple gaps at the bottom of this thing. And so seeing as it's already kind of made a paper mache, I'm going to use the toilet paper uh, glue method to build up that base. Same way as I did for the tea lights. I'm just going to start layering up and layering up and using it to kind of blend into the shapes that are already there. And I'm going to take this and put this on the same rack as my tea lights when it's done and let them all dry together. After a couple more layers of building up. Really trying to focus on making sure there's no seam between the toilet paper and the uh, structure itself. Okay, so I'll do that twice, but then while that's drying, I'm going to take this uh, orange juice cap and I want to put a bigger tea light that I have that I got from Michaels through here. It's one of the changing color ones, uh, so it's significantly bigger than a regular one, but it's good for lighting effects like this. So I'm trying to cut a hole for the light and I kind of decided that that's not quite big enough. It's not going to cut it. So I'm going to take up my wood burner and I'm going to cut most of this top away. So I'm just really keeping the detail of the sides of this thing. So it's kind of slow going but I'm being very patient and just cutting the top out of this thing. A power tool probably worked better here but uh, I didn't really feel like that was camera friendly. So I'm just going to take a knife and cut away some of the, the burned edges of this thing. But I got a pretty nice hole out of that. So I'm going to put the tea light in and uh, in the meantime I'm going to take some coffee stir sticks and just rip them apart. And then I kind of realized I should probably glue this thing together. So I take out the hot glue gun and I just coat this thing. And then once it's in there, I fill the gaps. So this process is a little chaotic, but this is usually how I work. I kind of tackle a bunch of things at the same time during drying times and etc. So here I have some cardstock and I'm going to add some what will eventually be metal details to these brazers. And so I'm just cutting thin strips and measuring them out and then I'm going to glue them to the edges of these, kind of in a four corners pattern and one strip at the top, just underneath the top of the, uh, the rim of that wooden dowel. And then I'm going to take four strips, which are going to fold down the sides of this thing on the north, south, east, and west of this. So I just glue the tops, and then I glue all of the sides and bend them down. And I just kind of hold them in place, and then once it's dry, I take some scissors and cut away the excess. And I'm going to do that to the other one as well. So here I have some little um, loops, metal loops that I got at Michael's and I'm just gluing those on the uh, metal strips that I just stuck on for an extra piece of detail. I'm going to do that to both as well. Okay, moving back to my orange juice cap. I want this to look like kind of an evil magical altar slash uh, portal thing. I'm going to keep it kind of generic generic evil altar so that I can use it as much as possible. So I have these bone um, spider legs that I got around Halloween at the dollar store and I just kind of clipped off all the legs because I knew they'd come in handy eventually. I uh, bought a couple of these. And so I'm just going to take hot glue and kind of assemble them in like a dome shape um, with and holding them in place as they dry. It kind of moves around a little bit. I'm just trying to make sure they stack on top of each other in a way that makes sense. 
and the connection to the glue cap or orange juice cap is going to be a little loose at first and they kind of fall off a little bit but once i've got them where i want them i'm going to like reinforce that with the hot glue gun and eventually i'll be coating these in mod podge and that uh, seals it in a way that makes a lot of sense so once I've got them all in place, I'm going to flip it upside down, take the hot glue gun and kind of glue them all to each other at the top. I want to hit this from the bottom side because I don't want to cover the top in the hot glue, but I do want them to be uh, kind of all contained to each other. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to take out uh, my Citadel skills here. Uh, great purchase instantly adds a ton of detail to any project because who doesn't like skulls so I'm gonna break off eight of these uh, four for each brazier I'm gonna glue them at the middle point in between all of these metal strips I'm gonna use a pair of tweezers here because it's just a lot easier to not burn yourself Make sure you de-wisp your crafts. Okay, so that's everything kind of at a good spot. So I'm going to start coating them in uh, Mod Podge and Black Paint, the Black Magic base coat for you BMC fans out there. So normally when people do this technique with the toilet paper and the glue, they don't do this step. But I want to do it here because it kind of seals the water out. So in the future when I'm going to be coating these in washes and paint, it doesn't soak it up as much. And that's going to be a bit of a game changer. And just have a wholesome conversation with your spouse while you do this. And the time will go much faster. Okay, so I'll leave that overnight. Once it's dry, it has this awesome coat on it that takes paint super well, and it kind of seals all the weak connections together in a great way. So for these, I'm just gonna follow Black Magic Crafts advice and dry brush them with a the gray. And these will be my fire markers. Okay, so while those are kind of drying, I'm going to take a deep gray and paint everything I intend to be stone on this thing, which is basically just the base, and then all of the stone sections of my brazers as well. And then I'm going to water down that color a little more, and I'm going to just totally coat those uh, funky stone pillars I got. So while those are drying I'm going to take a white and uh, dry brush my fire markers here. I'll set those aside. I'm going to take a uh, taupe and coat my sponge in it and just hit all these other stone pieces because I feel like it adds a really nice color to them. And uh, once your other layers cover this up it won't be quite so dramatic but it'll kind of show through and make it look a little more realistic so it's not just uh, tones of gray. Okay, so while all that's drying, I'm gonna go back to all my coffee stir sticks that I ripped up before, and I'm just gonna put on some gloves and start coating these in burnt umber. The gloves are an important step here because you're gonna get so much paint on your hands that you're practically painting these without a brush by the end of it. As soon as you pick it up, it's just covered in paint because it's so watered down. It speeds up the process a little bit. Alright, so I'll set those aside. And Black Magic Craft's advice for this step is to cut it off with a knife. And by it, I mean the cap for the uh, tea light. So I found that really wasn't working, so I grabbed a pair of like intense pliers here and I just grabbed it really hard with that and then start twisting it with my other hand and I found that that got it off really really easily as you can see here these ones took me no time at all where I was struggling with the first one for a little bit 
Okay, so for these I intend a light to come through them, so that needs a hole. So I'm just going to grab an X-Acto knife and kind of drill it through and then peel off the excess. And then I'll take those uh, lights that I took the caps off way back in the beginning and just test fit them. And so now I'm going to dry brush my stone here with like a light gray. Just very, very subtle dry brush on everything that's stone. And this will really bring out all your detail, especially on the toilet paper pieces. It just has so much natural detail. Okay, so now I'm going to paint my metal bits. So I'm going to mix just a generic silver and a black together. Only like one drop of black. It really uh, goes a long way when you're mixing it with the silver. And then I'm going to make like kind of a gun metal color with that. And I'm going to hit everything that was cardstock on these braziers. I've also added some water to it with an eyedropper. And it helps it uh, spread a little bit easier. So now I'm mixing a suede and a white to make kind of an aged bone color. And I'm going to hit all those uh, spider legs that I put on this evil altar. And then I'm going to also hit the skulls that are on my braziers. This process is a little tedious to paint when it's all assembled, but it'll be worth it. And so now I'm going to take a gold that I've kind of mixed with black and hit the rings that I put on the braziers as well. Just to kind of differentiate it a little bit. I'm also going to take some white here once the uh, bones are dry and uh, just kind of dry brush the tops of those. Okay, so I'm going to take my wood pieces now and just hot glue them to the fire markers uh, as per the tutorial. So I'm just going to like slap a bunch of glue on each uh, log and then just kind of find a place for it on here. And then I'm going to dry brush them with a black and then once that's done I'm going to dry brush like a golden yellow color over the top of this thing near where the uh, flame would be. Okay, so now everything needs a good wash. So I'm going to take my, uh, it's kind of a black-brown wash mix, uh, homemade. And I'm just going to coat everything in a pretty generous coat of this. And even the fire markers, just like the edges and the bottoms. So I'll leave that overnight. Once that's dry, I'm going to dry brush the bone with uh, kind of a suede. I've lightened it up a little bit with a little bit of white and then I'm just going to take a regular suede without any white and really uh, sparingly dry brush everything else. I don't want to get rid of all those dark tones that I put in but this will really help everything else pop. Okay. So now i got to glue the lights in here. So I'm going to put them in through the hole in the bottom and then glue it at the top. I'm not going to put any glue through the bottom of this thing because I don't want it to drip everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the top and then I'm going to take the original cap that I pulled off and I'm going to stick it on. So it's just going to like smush the glue and then I'm going to take the hot glue gun and I'm going to run glue up the cap to give it some texture all the while I'm holding it at the bottom in place and then once it's dry it'll hold itself and you'll be able to turn it on without too much issue. And then I'm going to take the other caps and put them on my brazers and those are pretty much good to go. So I have some pillow stuffing here which is really good for any kind of lighting effects because it really diffuses the light and helps it go a long way. So I'm going to just take a clump of that that I feel is right and stuff it inside my evil altar here. It's pretty easy to fit in through the bones. 
and then to hold that in place I'm just gonna inject the hot glue into the bottom of it. It also kind of gives it this good like wispy effect because it melts the stuffing uh, and then I'll cut it off with some scissors the excess. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the mar fire markers here. I'm just gonna put a bunch of glue on the top of it and I'm gonna take a piece of uh, stuffing that seems about right. I'm just gonna tease it a bit and then stick it on to my hot glue blob. Careful not to burn yourself. So I'll do that for all four. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my airbrush, I'm going to put some coal black from Reaper in it, uh, because I like to only put good paints through my airbrush, I don't want to clog it up, and I'm just going to take all my fire markers and just blast them with this. I'm going to go darker at the top and lighter at the bottom, but uh, this will help firm up that stuffing a little bit, and it will also give it like a natural smoky look, um, so the tea light doesn't have to do as much work filling up this uh, filler with light. And then once I'm done that, I'm going to coat everything in a matte varnish. Uh, very, very generous coat of this. I do this to pretty much everything I do, but I don't always film it because it's not that uh, attractive of a filming session. It looks like I'm spraying it with water, uh, so it's not very uh, scenic. <laughs> but it's an important step for this project specifically because it helps kind of firm up that uh, filler and uh, so it's not just going to fall off or anything and it's a little more stiff once this dries. So important step for this project but also for everything else. I usually do that. That's it friends, that's all there is to it. My lighting effects. I feel much better now that my <laughs> my tea light effects are up to par with my current skill because the old ones are going straight in the trash. Uh, I don't have space to keep junk around so I'm getting them out of here. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you have any uh, extra ideas to elaborate on this, I'd love to hear them because I feel like this community is just a wealth of knowledge and I always want to hear what you guys got going on. So let me know down there in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you had a good time. I'd really appreciate it. And subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I will be posting as often as I can. Have a good one, guys.